So in this question, we have to figure out the normal force that is acting on that little box of catnip. So what we're going to do first is draw a free body diagram showing forces that are acting on that box. Now, of course, we have the downward gravitational force, which we can say is equal to the mass of the box times g. And then we also have the normal force. So the normal force would be a force exerted by the elevator floor on that box. We're going to call that F sub n. Those are the only two forces acting on the box of catnip. And now what we need to do is apply Newton's second law. Newton's second law tells us that the sum of the forces in the y direction would equal the mass of that box multiplied by the acceleration of the box in the y direction. Let us assume that upward is the positive y direction and negative is downward. So with that convention, we can see that the positive normal force minus the gravitational force is going to equal the mass times the acceleration. Now we are looking to solve for normal force, so perhaps we can add the gravitational force to both sides of the equation. That will cancel it out on the left hand side, so now we have the normal force equal to the mass of the box times its acceleration plus the mass of the box times g. Now, if we look at the given information, we have a little bit of this. We know that the box of catnip has a mass of 12 kilograms. We also know that g is 9.8. But what is missing in this is the acceleration of the box of catnip. So at this point in solving the problem, we would get stuck here. We would have to find a way of determining the acceleration of that box of catnip. Now, if we look at the picture, Everything here is sort of connected as a single system. We have the elevator cab A, elevator cab B, and then the box of catnip. They are all going to be accelerating as one system. So if we can actually figure out the acceleration of, let's say, cab B, then we would also know the acceleration of the box of catnip. So that would be an interesting strategy to solving this question. Let's take a look at cab B, because we will be able to actually solve for the acceleration of cab B, which again is the same as the acceleration of the box of catnip. Now looking at cab B, which we might represent as just a point particle, we of course once again have the acceleration due to gravity, or I should say the force due to gravity, and so we would have the mass, and we'll call this capital B, so we don't confuse it with the little b above, mass of the cab B times G. That is the gravitational force pulling down on cab B. And then we also have this cable right here that's connected to cab B, and there's some tension in that cable. So we're going to represent that as a T, and then once again, we'll assume upward is positive, downward is negative. We can apply Newton's second law one more time. So we'll take the positive tension, we will subtract the gravitational force acting on cab B, and then we will set that equal to the mass of cab B times the acceleration of cab B. Now, we have some important information here. If we go back up, we have the tension in that cable. It says the tension in the cable connecting the cabs. So that's this cable right here, and that's the one we were using down below in our Newton's second law calculation. We also know the mass of cab B is 1300 kilograms. So we can come in here and plug in those known values. And there we have those values, and we can simplify the left-hand side, and when we do so, we would get 6360 Newtons. And then we wanna solve for the acceleration on cab B. So we would just divide both sides of this equation by the 1300 kilograms, canceling it out on the right hand side. And on the left hand side, we're going to get about 4.89 meters per second squared. This is the acceleration on cab B. It came out positive, so that means this cab and every other object in the system is accelerating upward. But now remember the secret to the question once we have the acceleration of cab B, we can plug that value in for the acceleration of the box of catnip because the box of catnip is accelerating at the same rate. So we go back to the equation that we developed earlier. We plug in the mass of the box of catnip, which was the 12 kilograms, multiplied by this acceleration that we just determined, and then add that once again to the mass multiplied by g. And there was a little glitch here, pardon me. And we're just going to omit units for clarity. And when we punch this all into our calculator, we will see that the normal force is approximately 176 newtons. And so this is the correct answer to the question. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. If you're interested in making a small donation to my cause, I'd greatly appreciate it, but of course, please do not feel obligated to do so.